So in today's video, I want to talk about a couple of things, and that is when is it the right time to graduate from your phone to an RTK receiver? So I'm going to talk about what the difference is between the two of them, what the limitations are of your phone versus an RTK receiver, kind of a rough cost breakdown of what you could expect to pay, and kind of show you the difference of how you could use the two systems here and what it means for you in the field. We get a lot of calls here from folks who are trying to do all sorts of mapping and positioning jobs, whether they be surveyors or environmental consultants, or even just sometimes hobby who are looking to get some positioning done and map things out in the world around them. And I think a lot of people start, especially when they're trying to get into GNSS technology, with something like their phone. And while your phone can give you a GPS position, there's a lot of limitations that come with using it, but it can be really daunting. It can be kind of scary to jump from your phone to something like an RTK receiver, because you know, you're going from something that's essentially free, it's your phone that you use every day, to an RTK system that in some cases can cost up to 80 grand if you're looking at a top of the line Trimble system. So what's better for you in the field? Is it something like an RTK system or can you get away with using something like your phone? Because we get a lot of calls from people every day who are looking to do some positioning, whether it be with their phone, they're looking to do some basic mapping, all the way to a land surveyor who's looking to put in your property corners with an RTK system. And there is a huge difference between the GPS chip that's inside your phone and the one that's inside one of these RTK receivers. And what I wanna do in this video is kind of explain when it makes sense to stick with your phone and when it makes sense to start upgrading and looking into a more professional option like that you'd find in an RTK receiver. So with that in mind, what is the actual difference between your phone and your RTK receiver? Because both will give you your latitude and longitude, both can give you coordinates that you can use on a map, and both can be used to give you all sorts of fun deliverables for clients, whether you be an environmental consultant or a land surveyor, or maybe you're just doing some basic GIS and you just want to map the world around you. And the main difference is this isn't really designed to do mapping primarily. It's designed to do a million other things and it does a million things really well, but it doesn't excel in one thing like an RTK receiver does. And that's because the GPS chip that's inside your phone, it might only be 10 or $15. And that's if you're buying it. When Apple's buying it or Samsung, probably costing them a dollar or two if that. When we look at the RTK receiver, a board inside an RTK receiver is gonna cost on the ballpark of five to $10,000 in some cases. And that's because this is specifically designed to give you a position under difficult conditions. So to do that, and what it does differently than this is one, the entire circumference of this receiver is an antenna. So on your phone, the antenna is actually, in, oh, we'll show you a quick little close up here, is there's just single lines here. And these lines in your phone are the actual antennas that are receiving signals, whether they be the cell or GPS signals. So for starters, you've got a way bigger surface area to get signals in to be able to process your position. The second big difference between the two of them is an RTK receiver has an engine specifically designed to compute a position. It's designed to give you as precise as a position as possible. And to do that, it sacrifices processing power in other areas. So these chips are specifically designed to be able to take a GPS signal or GNSS signal, take that information, decode it, process it, eliminate any bad noise, integrate other signals, and give you a position accurate to within a centimeter, whereas your phone's designed for speed. So it's wanting to take a positional signal from a satellite, process it as quickly as possible and give you a rough position because at the end of the day, if you're driving down the highway, you know when your next turn's coming. You don't need to know where an individual marker on a lane is, which is something you're probably gonna wanna be able to do with an RTK system. And finally, the biggest reason between these two devices are the signals they're designed to use and process in the field. So your phone is obviously trying to get a position quickly and it doesn't wanna do a particularly tough job and waste your battery power doing advanced calculations and processing a whole bunch of information that it doesn't really need to do to get processed. So a lot of the chips inside your phone might be L1, L2. Some of them will see GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou. Most of them won't. Again, it's designed to keep costs low. Whereas for an RTK receiver, you're gonna wanna take as much information as possible. So a lot of them are gonna be quintuple frequency receivers. So they're gonna see L1, L2, L5, L2CA, L3. A um, whole myriad of different signals across all constellations, something that it just doesn't make sense for in your phone. So what does that actually mean to you in the field and how does that limit the kind of work you can do with either device? So as I said, your phone is a great option for those of you who kind of just need to place a rough position. So if I'm surveying something like a building or I just need to know some general information on an intersection where I can almost see the object from space, your phone's a great option for doing that kind of mapping because it doesn't really matter that there might be 
30, 40, 50, 100 meters of air because you can see a building from 100, 200, 300 meters away. So it doesn't matter. But if you're doing something like a borehole where you've got to locate a corner on a property, RTK is the right solution for you because at the end of the day, if I can locate something to within a centimeter, I can find it every time without failure. If my phone's only giving me a position to, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 meters, it's going to be really hard to come back later and find that same object. With that in mind, I'm gonna kind of show you what you need if you wanna start considering RTK and you wanna kind of move up in your professional positioning equipment and how you would actually survey with it out in the field here. So to illustrate kind of what the limitations of our phone are when we're surveying, if I needed to locate this building, no issue. My phone is great for that. But what I've got here is just a free app that I can record my position with. And what I wanna use it to show you is, yeah, I've got my latitude and longitude position, which I could transform if I needed to into different coordinates later on. But let's say I wanna locate this sprinkler head here. Here. What you can see in the bottom of my screen is because I'm up against a building, I've got a 40 foot error. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I know roughly where this is to within 40 feet, that's not going to be much of a help. I live in Canada here, so you can see my snowbank's a bit melted here, but if the snowbank was here, I would have never been able to find this with this kind of positional error. So, sure, I could place it on the map and I could say, okay, like, where am I? Let me pay, say, waypoint. That's not going to be any help because there's a 40 foot error. It might be here, it might not, and if I try to navigate back to it, I'm never going to get to the same position. Where is if I use my RTK, which I'll grab in a second here, I'm going to be able to find this within five seconds using that receiver. I just recorded that point over here, and to kind of further illustrate my point here, I'm going to navigate back to it. And you can see on my screen here, I've got this compass, it's giving me an arrow, so I'm going to try to follow this arrow into my point here. And if I look at my map, you can see it's kind of already telling me I'm very close, but I'm not really accurate. Okay, I'm trying to follow my arrow. It's giving me some wonky directions here. And you can see, as I get closer to the wall here, it's just starting to go haywire. Okay, now I gotta head back. It's telling me, okay, oh, well, hang on. I, like, there's no way that I'm ever going to find this if it was covered by snow. I'd have to start digging. It's Canada. I don't wanna have to break out the snow shovel to find something that I should be able to locate very quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with an RTK rover now, and what you can see on my screen is instead of having, you know, 50 or 60 feet of air, I've got a couple millimeters of air or, you know, a tenth of an inch. So when I come up to this, now uh, my, my sprinkler head here, and I hit RTK fixed and store my position, I now have a position that's accurate to within a couple of centimeters or a couple of inches. So now I've run away, let's say it's snowed and I gotta go locate that sprinkler head, whether it be to fix it or replace it. All I've gotta do is click my position, hit stake point, and now instead of having this 30 or 40 foot error where I don't know where my position is, as I close in on it, the RTK system's gonna tell me when I'm there. So I know it's somewhere along this wall here. I'm coming in and you can see it actually tells me I'm exactly on that point. So when I hit RTK fixed, store position, you can see I'm within tolerance, I've located that position, and I'm now ready to replace this sprinkler head or locate it. And now obviously this applies to everything. It's not just when I'm trying to do a sprinkler head, it's if I'm in the woods, like I mentioned, and I'm trying to locate an animal den, and maybe I'm trying to locate something like a manhole cover that's under ice, or a culvert, or anything like that that is, you know, maybe obscured and not as easy to find is a building. So if you're somebody who needs to locate something that precisely, let's say this 30, 40 meter error, maybe you need sub-meter, maybe you need centimeter level accuracy on your positions, you know, what are you looking at to go from your phone to this? So as I mentioned, your phone, you know, you know the cost of it. An iPhone costs 1200 bucks. You might be able to get something cheaper like some of the Garmin GPS mappers for a couple hundred bucks. But your RTK systems, they can, as I mentioned, go anywhere from eight to 80 grand. So the specific setup I have here, it's a Nano 7 and a BMT8. You're looking somewhere in the ballpark of, you know, eight to 20 grand, depending on how wild you get with the accessories, whether you need multiple receivers, whether you got a cell connection, all of that kind of stuff. So if you have questions about what kind of setup would be best for your use case, because we can customize these to meet exactly what you need to do. Give us a shout, talk to us. It doesn't matter if you're not gonna buy from us or not. We'd be more than happy to at least point you in the right direction for what you need. So now that you got a little bit of an understanding about the difference between going from your phone phone to an RTK system, you've got two options. You can give us a shout, we can talk you through exactly what you would need, whether it's an RTK system, a submeter antenna, or even if it makes more sense to stick with your phone, or you can check out the next video about RTK and learn a little bit more about what it could do for you.